This lesson will cover the following topics. The thermoplunger system. The additional heating combustion system. The passenger compartment heating resistor system, RCH. Let us first introduce the role of additional heating. The calorific energy released is less significant in the latest technology engines. Consequently, there is less availability of a hot air source. Some additional heating systems affect the coolant circuit in order to accelerate the rise in temperature of a diesel or petrol engine. Additional heating is designed to reduce the time it takes to attain the temperature requested inside the vehicle. To re-establish an efficient heating service, the engine coolant circuit is fitted with a heating device called a thermoplunger system. The thermoplunger system is principally made up of a water unit, including several heating resistors, several relays, and a control unit. The three or four thermoplungers are located on the water unit, on the coolant circuit, between the cylinder head and the heater matrix. Thermoplungers are incandescent plugs, each supplied with battery voltage via a relay. The operation of the thermoplunger system depends mainly on the temperature of the coolant and the external air. The engine temperature sensor and air temperature sensor provide the injection computer with information. The injection computer controls the relays. The relays activate several thermoplungers depending on the heating requirement of the engine. The thermoplunger system stops automatically when one of the temperature conditions is not fulfilled. The thermoplungers go out one by one depending on the air-coolant temperature ratio. Let us look in detail at the thermoplunger heating control. The injection computer controls the thermoplungers according to mapping related to the coolant temperature, the air temperature, and whether the following conditions are met. Engine speed over a certain threshold. Battery voltage over a certain value. And preheating completed. For a system fitted with three thermoplungers, the thermoplunger control is made up of three steps. Single thermoplunger control for 20 seconds. Control of two thermoplungers for 20 seconds. Control of three thermoplungers. Depending on the operating conditions, the thermoplunger control can be interrupted and then restarted following the three stages. In this section we covered the following points. Additional heating is designed to reduce the time it takes to attain the temperature requested inside the vehicle. The thermoplunger system affects the coolant circuit in order to accelerate the rise in temperature of the coolant. The operation of thermoplunger unit heating depends mainly on the temperature of the coolant and the temperature of the external air. Thermoplunger control breaks down into three stages. Let us now look at the additional heating combustion system. Like the thermoplunger system, the additional heating combustion system affects the coolant circuit. The additional heating combustion system relays more calorific power than the thermoplunger system, which enables the coolant temperature to rise more quickly. The additional heating combustion system is automatically activated and operates depending on certain criteria. The additional heating combustion system is fitted in series to the engine coolant circuit between the cylinder head and the heater matrix. The additional heating combustion system is mainly comprised of a boiler, a combustive fuel supply circuit, coolant, and an electrical circuit. The additional heating combustion system is based on the principle of combustion occurring inside the boiler. The fuel used comes from a pipe connected to the vehicle's fuel tank. The oxidizer is the air brought in via a pipe connected to the outside. The coolant enters the boiler cold, is heated on contact with the heat exchanger and comes out hot. 
the circulation of the coolant is ensured by the engine coolant pump. The system requires an electrical supply for the boiler to operate and be managed. Let us look first at the activation authorization for additional combustion heating. Authorization is processed by the following components. The control device, temperature sensor, and the air temperature switch. The control device is a computer in the boiler. The control device is designed to analyze information from the sensors and manage the operation of the different actuators in the heat production cycles. The coolant temperature sensor in the boiler is a negative temperature coefficient type thermistor. The air temperature switch located outside the boiler is a thermal switch. The combustion request is automatic and depends on the following conditions. Engine running. External air temperature below or equal to 5 degrees Celsius and coolant temperature below the boiler's emergency threshold. When starting the engine, and depending on the vehicle type, the oil pressure warning light or battery charge warning light ignition circuit sends the engine running signal to the control device. The coolant temperature sensor informs the control device of the engine temperature on starting. The switch informs the control device when the air temperature is below or equal to 5 degrees Celsius. Using this information, the control device decides whether or not to activate the system. Once activation is authorized, the system operates according to the following stages. Starting, adjustment and cutoff. Let us begin with starting additional combustion heating. Different components manage heater starting. They are described as follows. The control device is located in the boiler. The air blower turbine positioned in the boiler is made up of a fan and a direct current motor. The incandescent plug is a heating resistor located in the boiler. The metering pump located outside the boiler is a variable flow electric fuel pump. The flame detector is a positive temperature coefficient type thermistor, located in the boiler. Let us look in detail at the actuator control that enables the system to start. The coolant temperature sensor informs the control device of the engine temperature on starting. The switch informs the air temperature control device. Following its analysis, the device controls the various actuators. The device controls the supply frequency of the pump motor. The pump then brings in the quantity of fuel that corresponds with the production of heat required. The device controls air blowing, comprised of the electric motor and the fan. Air blowing brings in the air required for the combustion of the fuel injected into the chamber. The device controls the incandescent plug supply. The incandescent plug primes the combustion at the start of each heating cycle. The flame detector informs the control device that combustion is effective. Let us now look at the adjustment of additional combustion heating. This adjustment is based on a two-phase cycle, full speed and low speed. The speed depends on the temperature inside the boiler. Depending on the temperature, the device controls the supply of the metering pump and the blowing apparatus. When heating is activated, it alternates between full and low speed in order to adjust the internal temperature of the boiler. Let us look at the adjustment operation. The adjustment is handled by the following components. The control device, the coolant temperature sensor, and the overheating switch. The overheating switch is a negative temperature coefficient type thermistor. It is located in the boiler close to the combustion chamber. The overheating switch informs the control device of an excessive coolant temperature close to the heating unit. The temperature sensor continually informs the control device of the development of the engine temperature. 
The control device manages the boiler speed in accordance with the information received. From the coolant temperature sensor and from the overheating switch. The boiler ceases to operate when the temperature reaches its maximum threshold, when the engine stops, and when a malfunction is detected. When the coolant temperature reaches a certain point, the control device receives a signal from the coolant temperature sensor and cuts off the supply to the boiler. When the engine stops, the control device receives a signal from the injection computer and cuts off the supply to the boiler. When a malfunction is detected, the boiler enters fault mode. Fault mode is processed by the following components. The control device, the flame detector, the coolant temperature sensor, and the overheating switch. The boiler enters fault mode under one of the following conditions. The coolant temperature reaches 125 degrees Celsius. There is a temperature difference of 15 degrees Celsius between the coolant temperature sensor and the overheating switch. The flame detector does not detect any combustion after trying to start for the second time. The battery voltage is over 16 or below 10 volts. When the control device receives the signal for overheating or no flame, it cuts off the air and fuel supply to the boiler. The control device enables communication with the fault finding tool on some boilers. The fault is stored and can be referred to via the fault finding tool. In this section we covered the following points. The additional heating combustion system releases more calorific power than the thermoplunger system. The additional heating combustion system is based on the principle of combustion occurring inside the boiler. The combustion request depends on the engine running, the external temperature and the temperature of the coolant. Once activation is authorized, the system operates according to the following stages. Starting, adjustment and cutoff. Using the information received and its own internal mapping, the control device calculates the quantities of air and fuel with which to supply the boiler. Heating alternates between full and low speed in order to adjust the internal temperature of the boiler. The control device manages the boiler speed according to the information received from the coolant temperature sensor and the overheating switch. The boiler ceases to operate when the temperature reaches its stopping threshold, when the engine stops, and when a fault is detected. Let us now look at the Passenger Compartment Heating Resistor System, or RCH. The RCH system directly heats the air in the passenger compartment. This system is solely designed for the thermal comfort of the passengers and is mainly used for diesel engines. Additional passenger compartment heating is located in the heater unit downstream of the heater matrix. The RCH system is directly controlled by the air conditioning computer. However, the control of the RCH system may be carried out via the UCH. The RCH system is mainly comprised of an electric radiator and several relays. The electric heating resistors are positive temperature coefficient type ceramic plates. These plates are surrounded by fins and assembled in independent steps. The RCH is comprised of between three and five steps, depending on the power to be supplied. Let us now look at the conditions for triggering the RCH. The electric heating is triggered when the engine starts, when the temperature of the heater matrix is not sufficient to heat the air in the passenger compartment. The triggering of the RCH depends, therefore, on the engine having started and the engine temperature. The operation of the RCH also depends on the passenger compartment ventilation speed, the external air temperature, the battery voltage, authorization of the injection computer, and the power available from the alternator. Let us now look at the overall operation of the RCH. 
The air conditioning computer and the UCH, or just the UCH, control the battery voltage supply to the RCH via relays. The RCH transforms the electrical energy into calorific energy. When it flows into the RCH, the air circulated by the fan receives the heat produced by the ceramic plates and diffused by the fins. The hot air is then distributed in the passenger compartment as requested. Let us look in detail at the control of the RCH system. The air conditioning computer, or UCH, controls the heating resistors according to the heat requirements and in accordance with the electrical load value. A system with three steps has two relays. One relay controls two steps. The two relays control the three steps. If the starting conditions are met, the air conditioning computer, or UCH, controls the two relays in three stages. One relay controls one step. The computer, or UCH, cuts off the supply from the first relay and controls the second relay. The computer or UCH controls both relays together. If some conditions have not been met, the air conditioning computer or UCH modifies the control of the relays according to the new heat requirement. Let us now look at the conditions for stopping the RCH. When the engine temperature has reached a certain level, the engine temperature sensor transmits a signal to the air conditioning computer which then decides to cut off the RCH supply. If the exterior temperature reaches a certain level, the exterior air temperature sensor transmits a signal to the air conditioning computer, which then decides to cut off the supply from the RCH. If the passenger compartment airspeed becomes zero, the exterior air temperature sensor transmits a signal to the air conditioning computer, which then decides to cut off the supply from the RCH. When the alternator supply is too high, it transmits a cyclic ratio type signal to the air conditioning computer. Control of the RCH is then prohibited, as the battery would discharge. Let us now look at the way in which different additional heating systems are tested. The thermoplunger system is checked visually and electrically. The additional heating combustion and RCH systems are checked manually electrically and using the senses. The visual check of the three systems can be carried out by manipulating or checking the electrical connections. The additional heating combustion system may also require a fluids check. The electrical check on the three systems can be made using the fault finding tool or the multimeter. In this section we covered the following points. The passenger compartment heating resistor system directly heats the air in the passenger compartment. The electric heating is triggered when the engine starts when the temperature of the heater matrix is not sufficient to heat the air in the passenger compartment. Air flows into the RCH, captures the heat produced by the resistors and comes out hot in the passenger compartment. The air conditioning computer determines the number of relays to activate based on the signals it receives. If the starting conditions are met, the air conditioning computer, or UCH, then controls the two relays in three stages. The RCH ceases to operate when the engine temperature reaches a certain level or when one of the starting conditions is no longer met.